Hello and welcome to this quick presentation on the limitations of the resolution of your analyzer and the spectrum. Now, have you ever noticed that sometimes when you're analyzing spectra, you put your cursor on a peak, ask for harmonics of that frequency, yet the harmonics don't quite line up with the peaks. Now it all depends on how the harmonics are drawn, whether they're all the way through to the bottom of the graph or they actually point to the peaks of the graph. But you might notice that sometimes, you know, you're sure the cursor, you move it left, you move it right, you're up on top of the um, peak, the 1x peak for example, um, but the harmonics don't quite line up. And you find that you have to adjust the frequency just a little bit to make them line up. Yet the peak was, the cursor was on top of the peak. In other cases, they do line up. And this is because of the way the spectrum is calculated and the limitations of resolution. Now, just a little bit of background. When you, when you ask the analyzer to take a 800 line spectrum, a 1600 line spectrum, 3200 line, whatever, it is going to take the fmax that you're interested in and come up with 800 individual numbers for an 800 line spectrum. Uh, each one of those numbers represents the sort of the sum of the vibration in that bin. If it was an 800 hertz spectrum and 800 lines of resolution then there's going to be 800 numbers and each one represents each increment of one hertz give or take half a hertz. Let me illustrate that. It's easier with when I illustrate these things I think. So here is a situation where we've got 800 lines of resolution and 800 Hertz F max and we've zoomed in to go from 0 to 25 Hertz and we are generating a sine wave, a frequency of 15 Hertz. Now I've turned on windowing just to skip that point. If the machine actually generated exactly 15 hertz, that means that that value of vibration is going to fall right on one of those bins. 800 hertz, 800 lines, there's going to be 800 numbers. 1 hertz, 2 hertz, 3 hertz, 4 hertz, 5 hertz, including 15 hertz. So when we, if the machine actually generated 15 hertz, or really close to it, then we get a nice sharp peak like that. But when it doesn't, and the machine generates 15.1 hertz or 15.2 hertz, 0.3, 0.4, 0 0.5, the peak in the spectrum is therefore not only reduced in amplitude, but it doesn't properly represent the frequency. So in this case, I've got a 15.5 hertz spectrum. But in my, sp oh, sorry, 15.5 hertz source of vibration, but my spectrum has a value at 15 hertz and a value at 16 hertz. It has no idea what the vibration was like at 15.5 hertz. So we get a, a peak that's got this sort of shape. And when we put our cursor, it's either going to be at 15 hertz, and therefore by default, depending on how your software works, the the second harmonic will be at um, 30 hertz and then at 45 hertz and 60 hertz. But the vibration is actually 15 and a half hertz. We want the second harmonic to be at 31 hertz, not at 30 hertz, and so on and so forth. That's why the harmonic markers don't line up. If the vibration really was 15 hertz or just a little bit either side, the harmonic markers will line up. Uh, if not, they won't line up and you'll have to fine tune them. So let's have a look at that with some real data. In fact, I'll just go back for a second. Um, let's look at that with some real data. This time I'll take um, some case study data. This is from I Learn Case Studies or I Teach Case Studies, whichever program. And Right now what I'm going to do is click on that nice big peak there and move the cursor from either side. So I hope you can see this clearly enough. But there's my marker on top of the 1x one, one peak. I've got my graph order normalized. 1x peak, there's my 2x peak, 3x peak, 4x peak. And as I move the cursor off the peak, the harmonic markers don't sit on the peaks. 
when I put it on the peak, they match nicely, and when I go on the other side, of course, they don't match up. And if I look really closely at that peak, you see it's a little bit off shape. It's a little bit off shape, but it's pretty good, and that's why the harmonic markers lined up pretty well. Now what I'm going to do is choose a different machine. And this time, I'm going to put my cursor on top of that peak there and look where my harmonics line up. Can you see them down there? It's not on the 2x peak or the 3x peak or the 4x peak, 5x and so on. It's not, they're not lining up. So I move my cursor to either side and they just, they just don't line up. And if you're not familiar with this issue, you might be thinking, oh, well, they may be, are they harmonics? I mean, to look at the spectrum, of course they are. But you may start to go through your mind, what is going on? Why won't they line up? Well, the reason is that if I look at the shape of this peak, it looks like the thing we were just looking at before, where when the peak wasn't exactly on one of the bins, it had that funny shape. Well, the good news is, and you'll have to look at your software, there are two ways around this problem. One way is that your software may give you a, um, a fine-tune control. So in this software, it happens to be square brackets open and close square brackets. So as I just tweak the value, you notice that I can just change it just by a fractional frequency and there it is up on top there and when I get it just right notice now the harmonics are on top there 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 beautiful you know I've just fine-tuned my cursor and I've lined it right up with those peaks so even though the shape of the peak wasn't perfect doesn't matter but there is another function that your software ought to have and I truly don't know if they all do in this program that um, if you click on the peak, what it does is it looks at the peak, looks at the shape and says, ah, look at the shape of this. I can tell that the frequency is not correct and actually it can tell that the amplitude is not correct. And what it will do is it will look at the shape. Remember, if we go back to this just for a uh, moment, notice that as I change this frequency, see how that peak and I'll just turn windowing on. See how the peak changes in shape in a very predictable way? Well, because we know what that, how that shape will change, we can look at the shape of the peak and figure out exactly what the frequency is. Now, I apologize. I don't know what the function keys are in all the software. I know that in the Emerson, CSI Emerson software, it's the locate function. And I apologize. I don't know what it is in the other programs. But, um, um, but when I... In this software, when I click on the peak, it automatically curve fits it and notice, bingo, I'm now, my harmonic cursors are lining up perfectly with the tops of those peaks. The only time a function like this will not work is if the vibration at the frequency where you're clicking, if that vibration is not purely from one source. In other words, if the vibration was from a couple of sources that are very close the shape of the peak won't be right and therefore the curve fit calculation will be wrong. It'll come up with the wrong frequencies. So if you're ever wondering why it doesn't always work, that's why. Anyway, so the solution to this problem is find out what that special key is in your software. See if you've got a way for the software to determine the actual frequency and go from there. Or else just use your fine tune control to just slightly adjust the frequencies and then you should find the harmonic markers all line up or sideband markers or whatever you're doing. Anyway, I hope that uh, quick presentation was useful. I hope it explained something that you've seen in a spectrum but we're not sure about. Thanks for viewing the presentation.